Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a few sample analyses on two potential short-term rental investments of mine. We're going to be using the Bigger Pockets rental income calculator on biggerpockets.com and we're going to compare and contrast the difference in returns between a two-bedroom and a four-bedroom property in the same market. All right. The first property that we're going to analyze is a two bedroom. And I have already used the tools that I have taught you in a previous video on how to determine or estimate what a potential short term rental investment should be able to produce income wise. So we're using a few different data points. I'm personally using the air DNA data as well as the market dashboards in function in price labs as well as the enemy method to see what my neighbors are doing. So I've come up with a projection of 65,000 annually, and that has the vacancy built into it already. So we don't need to account for that in our analysis on the calculator. So this property has been updated some, it has new floors, new paint, new kitchen and new bathrooms. So it's not the most luxury or the nicest property out there. I would say it's on the upper end of the middle of the road for other two bedroom properties in the market. And if I were to list this on the MLS today, I would list it for probably right around 499,000. All right, so I already have the income data and the expense data in here for you. So you don't have to watch me type. Purchase price, 499. Closing costs around 6,500, depending on a few things. 10% down because I do plan to stay in the property for some time out of the year. Interest rate, 3.5. Those can fluctuate and it 100% depends on your financial picture. So that can be, that can go either way. At 65,000 annually, we come up with $5,416 a month. Property taxes in this part of the country, in this county are very, very low. So I know this looks crazy, but it is pretty close. Insurance, about 166 a month, uh, 3% monthly for repairs. Vacancy is already built into that projection that I gave you, so nothing here. Since this property has been really well maintained and we just did a pretty decent size rehab on it, don't expect a lot of CapEx in the next 12 months, so we're doing 1%. Management fees, even though we self-manage, Airbnb does charge a 3% fee to list on their website, so we're using that. About 150 a month for electricity. This property does not have gas and the fireplace is electric. Uh, $50 a month-ish for water and sewer. It's technically on a well, but that $50 will cover any well maintenance. Uh, we don't have an HOA fee here, but there is not a field for internet. So I'm putting my internet costs into the HOA tab, about a hundred bucks a month. No garbage because the cleaners take that with them. And in the other tab, I have cleaning fees. So I pay about 125 per clean at this property at an average of five cleans per month. Okay, so monthly cash flow, 1,871. Income, 5,416. Expenses, about 3,500. Cash on cash return. So this is the most important tool we use when analyzing short-term rentals. Cash on cash returns really the the benchmark that we like to use. The benchmark of the cash on cash return that we look for is at least 15%. So we're looking really, really good here for cash on cash return. And this just shows you a different view of a lot of the details. And let's say I happen to be able to get a better interest rate, changes things a little bit. Cash on cash return is now above 40. So you can kind of play with these tools here to uh, move some things around. And let's see, here's some interesting information. So your NOI, which is all of your expenses before your mortgage, 46,000 cash on cash return here. I don't pay much attention to cap rate when it comes to short-term rentals because that's really more for commercial properties where the income determines the value of the property. But even though these are technically businesses, they are appraised based on residential sold comps. So this doesn't mean a lot here. Cash on cash return though is what we're, what we're really looking at. Okay, guys, now I'm going to show you a four bedroom that is similarly updated 
And you're going to see that the returns are higher because a lot of the expenses don't necessarily change with the size of the property. So this property, if I were to list it today, I would list for about $750,000, same market as the other property. Uh, I have my same subway tile bathrooms in there. I do that on pretty much everything. And you know, again, it's a nice property, by no means the nicest, most luxurious property uh, in the market of its size. It's just a cute, nice, clean place to stay. I would list this on the MLS today for $750,000. Okay, so $750,000, about $7,500 for closing costs, depending on the bank you use and if you can get the seller to pay for any. 10% down because I plan to stay in it. If I buy one or the other of these, I plan to stay in it for a certain amount of time per year. 3.5% interest, 30 years, same, same terms as the other property that we analyzed. So this one, using the methods that I've taught you to determine how much a rental property should make, uh, the gross is about $110,000 a year, which comes out to a little over $9,100 a month. Property taxes, again, very low in this market. Whoops, insurance. This is not right. Here's a maintenance, again, 3%. Vacancy is already built into that gross number that I gave you. CapEx, I've recently remodeled this one as well, so I would say about 1%. Again, 3% for management fees, even though we are self-managing because Airbnb does charge 3%, and I get about 85% of my bookings from Airbnb. Electricity, 199 bucks. Again, no gas here. I have electric fireplaces so that guests can't blow out pilot lights and make me have to send maintenance people all the time. You would be surprised how often that happens with gas fireplaces. Water and sewer. This one is on city water, about $6,500 a month. Again, no HOA fee, but I'm putting my internet costs here uh, because there's not an internet field. So hundred bucks a month. Notice my internet bill is the same here as my two bedroom because I'm not using cable. I'm just using internet. Uh, we provide streaming services to our guests. No garbage because the cleaners take that with them. This one's a little bit more expensive. Uh, 200 bucks a month. I mean, sorry, 200 bucks a clean times of an average of five cleans a month. Let's see what we get. All right, so at a $750,000 purchase price, a gross annual income of 110,000 a year, we come up with a cash on cash return of 55%. That is a ridiculous cash on cash return. But what I wanted to show you here, guys, is that a four bedroom property is a higher return on investment than a two bedroom. So, and it's not really that much more expensive to, to run or to keep up. So just wanted to show you guys the difference between a two and a four. Again, here's all this data, keeping it. You know, if we get the interest rate down some, even higher cash on cash return, I mean, that's a silly cash on cash return, but we are hitting right about that because we actually um, did a little bit better than 110,000. This is just, I'm using the methods that I'm teaching you rather than my own rental history because you're not going to have your own uh, rental history to analyze. All right, y'all, that's going to do it for our deal analysis walkthrough video. For more helpful tips, pick up my book, Short-Term Rental, Long-Term Wealth at www.biggerpockets.com slash strbook. Catch you next time.